Hello everybody and welcome to this GCSE chemistry video about reaction profiles. This video builds on the previous video about energy changes in reactions and we'll start with a little bit of a recap about that. Then we'll move on to look at what reaction profiles actually are. We will link that to the exothermic and endothermic reactions that we've already looked at. And then we'll finish by looking at how we can use reaction profiles to find things out about reactions. For instance, the overall energy change and the activation energy. And we will also link this in to the effect catalysts can have on reactions. And we will finish by looking at reversible reactions and the energy changes in those types of reaction. Hopefully you've already watched my other video about energy changes in chemical reactions. If you haven't, just a really quick recap that in any chemical reaction, energy is normally transferred either from the reaction mixture to the surroundings or the other way around. And so here we've got the reaction mixture and if in this reaction energy is being transferred out to the surroundings, for instance to a thermometer as well that might be in the reaction mixture, but also to the air surrounding the beaker and the chemicals that are inside it. And so what will happen here is two things. First of all, the chemicals will have some energy at the beginning, but then they will have less at the end because they have given this energy out to their surroundings. And the second thing that will happen is that the thermometer, which is a part of the surroundings, not the chemicals, will have gained some of that energy and the thermometer's temperature will have increased. And this is, if you remember, an exothermic reaction because heat energy is exiting the chemicals. Alternatively, we can have a different type of reaction, which is an endothermic reaction. And everything that happens in an endothermic reaction is pretty much the opposite of an exothermic reaction. So this time for the reaction mixture, we have energy moving into the chemicals from the surroundings, including the thermometer. And so the chemicals themselves have got more energy at the end than they had at the beginning. So they have gained energy. And that's because heat energy is entering the chemicals and endothermic reaction. And because the thermometer is part of the surroundings that is losing energy to the chemicals, it will record a temperature decrease. Now this links with reaction profiles because they illustrate these energy changes that are happening during a reaction by giving us a visual, more of a graphical representation of these energy changes. So let's look at these now. Now, a reaction profile is a graph, and what it shows is it shows the energy of the reaction changing over time. And so the y-axis for the graph is the amount of energy the chemicals have got at any particular moment. And the x-axis for the graph is called the progress of the reaction. And so what that means is that the left-hand side of the graph is the beginning of the reaction, so the reactants, and the right-hand side is the end of the reaction, so the products. And so if we consider a reaction where the reactants have got a certain amount of energy, and I'm just going to draw a line here to represent the amount of energy that the reactants have, so that's the chemicals at the beginning of the reaction, and so that's on the left hand side, but then the products at the end of the reaction, they are on the right hand side. And so what this shows visually and very quickly is that the reactants have got a higher amount of energy than the products have got. And so what this tells us is that our chemicals have lost energy during this reaction. They had a certain amount of energy at the beginning, at the end they have got less energy. And so the heat energy has exited the chemicals. And so this is a reaction profile for an exothermic reaction because the chemicals have lost energy. Now to finish this reaction profile off, we need to draw a line that connects the reactants to the products. Now this line doesn't go straight down connecting the two. What it follows is more of a curve 
like this. And so that shows the energy change during the chemical reaction. Let's take a look now at an endothermic reaction. And so you can see I've got the same axes as before, energy on the y-axis and the progress of the reaction on the x-axis. And what I've just chosen to do is to have the same starting energy of the reactants. And then this time, though, what needs to be different for my endothermic reaction is the products are going to have a different amount of energy to the exothermic reaction. And that's because heat energy enters the chemicals. And so the products will have a greater amount of energy than the reactants had. And you can see that from this line here. This is the amount of energy that the products have got. And so the curve that we drew for the exothermic reaction, it follows the same general shape, but obviously it has to look slightly different because it's higher on the left rather than higher on the right. And so this is an endothermic reaction because the chemicals have gained energy and so overall the products have got more energy than the reactants began with. Really, we've already looked at one use of reaction profiles, and that's to show quickly and visually the difference between an endothermic and an exothermic reaction. So you need to be able to recognise the different profiles and, and say whether it's an exothermic or endothermic change. Now, another use is actually the other regions of the reaction profile itself. Now, we never really show the values on these reaction profiles, but what we do is we try and represent the magnitude of the energy change by having a bigger or a smaller gap. So let me explain what I mean by that. So if here are the reactants and here are the products, we'll do this for an endothermic reaction. And the amount of energy that the chemicals have is shown by their positions on the y-axis. So if we just kind of skim across all the way to the products, that is how much energy the products have got. I've not got much room, so I'll just write EP for the energy of the products. And this is EP for the energy of the reactants, ER, I should say. And so now, whatever those numbers are, doesn't really matter. But what we can say is that the difference between those two numbers, well, that is the energy change during this chemical reaction. And we can actually label this on the reaction profile itself. And sometimes this is required of you in an exam situation. So this is the overall energy change. And for some reason that doesn't make a lot of sense at GCSE chemistry, we actually label that overall energy change with the symbol delta H. For delta means change and H is standing for energy because E gets used elsewhere. So if we take a look at a different reaction, let's keep it as being an endothermic reaction. So here are the products and sort of their energy is going to be shown on the y-axis here, reading all the way along like this, so this is the energy that the products have got. And so this time, the gap between the reactants and the products is not so large. And so the overall energy change for this reaction that I'm representing in the right-hand reaction profile has got a smaller overall energy change. And we can show that by having a slightly more bunched up graph and a sort of a smaller hill going up like this. And so this is a second use of reaction profiles. We can see what the overall energy change is for a chemical reaction. I should finish this section by pointing out that the overall energy change for a reaction depends on whether the reaction is exothermic or if it is endothermic. If it is an exothermic reaction, as I've got on the left here, this will lead to a negative energy change because the chemicals lose energy out to the surroundings. Whereas if it's endothermic, such as the one I've got on the right hand side, energy is entering the chemicals, so the overall energy change is a positive energy change. The third way that we can use reaction profiles is to determine the activation energy for a chemical reaction. Now, if you've studied the rate of reaction topic, you'll know about what the activation energy is. But just in case you haven't, the activation energy is the minimum energy required for a chemical reaction to start. 
and this activation energy is required to break bonds inside the reactants to allow the atoms that are in the reactants to form new bonds to different chemicals and so to make different products to the reactants at the beginning. And so this energy has to go in to break the chemical bonds. And that's why, if we look at the left-hand graph, that's why we don't have a straight line, we actually have a curve, because the bonds need to be broken. And that requires energy. Energy has to go in to break those bonds. And so, what this is, the activation energy, and we can actually show it on the graph by starting with the energy that the reactants have got and drawing a line up to the peak of the curve because that is the total amount of energy that has to go in. That is the activation energy. And so what we can use reaction profiles to do is to compare the activation energy for two or three or more different reactions. So if we compare the left-hand reaction profile to the right-hand reaction profile, the reactants have got the same amount of energy in each, but the hill is not so big. That means that less energy needs to go in. So on the right-hand side reaction, the activation energy is smaller because the difference between the reactants and the peak, the top of the smooth curve, we have got a smaller difference. So this one has got a smaller activation energy. Now the curve goes down on the right hand side because energy is released when new bonds form and so that's why we get these overall energy changes because energy has to go in to make the reaction happen, that's the activation energy, and then energy comes out when new bonds form. And so the difference between those two numbers, the in and the out, that is what the overall energy change represents. And so these are both endothermic reactions, so you can see that the overall energy is a positive change because more energy has to go in to break bonds than comes out when new bonds form. And so that's a third use of reaction profiles, looking at the profiles and saying, OK, the activation energy is bigger for the one on the left than the one on the right, because the one on the right has got a much smaller peak to its curve. We can also use reaction profiles to explain the effects that catalysts can have on the rate of a chemical reaction. Now, again, if you've studied the rates of reaction topic, you will know that catalysts are something that can speed up the rate of a chemical reaction without being used up themselves. Now, the way that they do this is they provide an alternative reaction pathway for the chemicals to use. And this reaction pathway has got a lower activation energy. And that's the nutshell of what you need to know about catalysts, is that they speed up a reaction without being changed and that they provide a lower activation energy for the reaction to follow. And so if we consider the reaction profile that I've got here on the screen, you can see that the activation energy can be found by drawing the line for the energy of the reactants and then follow that line up to the peak of the curve, like so. So this is the activation energy. Now what a catalyst does is it decreases the activation energy. And so what that means is we end up with a lower curve than before. So I'm gonna draw a second curve onto my line and this curve is going to have a different shape to it. It's going to be a more gentle curve like so. And so this curve now has got a lower peak than before and that peak, remember, represents the activation energy. So this is showing the reaction profile for a reaction that uses a catalyst to speed up the reaction. And so what you can see is that the activation energy is lower and what that means is the energy that needs to go in to make the chemical reaction happen is a lower amount of energy. And so that's why the reaction happens faster because more chemicals have got that minimum amount of energy needed to start the reaction. I want to finish this video by taking a quick look at reversible reactions. And if you haven't studied these before, I need to tell you that the reversible reaction symbol is the one that's shown just after the title, here.
taking a quick look at the reaction profile shows us that the energy change for this reaction is an endothermic process. The reactants have gained energy. So the overall energy change, which is the difference between the energy of the reactants and the energy of the products, this is a positive energy change because it is an endothermic reaction. The chemicals have gained energy. Now, for a reversible reaction, what this means is that the reactants can turn into the product in the traditional forwards direction, but once the products have formed, they can change back into the reactants. And this can happen continuously and indefinitely. Now, how this links in with energy changes in chemical reactions is that if the forwards reaction is endothermic, as is linked to my reaction profile here, then the reverse or backwards reaction will be exothermic. It will release energy and it will be the exact same amount as needed to go in in terms of the forwards direction. That will be the same as the amount that comes out in the backwards direction. And that makes sense because we follow the same smooth curve. The reactants turn into the products. This is the energy difference. The products turn back into the reactants. It's the same difference in starting point between the energy of the reactants and the energy of the products. So reversible reactions, that's where the products can turn back into the reactants. The forward direction will have the exact same size energy change as the backwards direction. Just one will be endothermic and the other will be exothermic. It could be either way around, doesn't have to match my example that's here. Okay, that's the end of this video about reaction profiles. I will be releasing another video about bond energies soon, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.